My name is Anthony Kazazis, and I'm the director of the NYC Network Group, as well as the NYC Real Estate Expo. And I want to thank everybody that's Zooming in and attending, uh, whether you're doing it live or whether you're streaming it. Um, please note that there is no Q&A today. This morning, <clears throat> we have our sponsor, Lending One. Lending One is proud to offer, um, they're announcing uh, the launch of Lending One CRE. This is a new uh, loan program that they're offering at Lending One. Lending One, of course, has been doing a, a lot of videos with us, uh, always inviting out guests and talking about their products. And today they're very excited to announce the launch of Lending One CRE, Commercial Real Estate. Um, Lending One is a national lender offering stable capital in association with a large global asset manager, competitive pricing, and flexible financing products for commercial real estate market. Today, Anuj Gupta, president of Lending One CRE, will have a discussion on building value in your commercial real estate with proven financing solutions for commercial property investing. Uh, Anuj L. Gupta serves as the president of Lending One CRE. Mr. Gupta is one of the founding members of the CRE group at the Lending One CRE and also serves on the executive committee. Prior to joining Lending One, Mr. Gupta was employed by Waterfall Asset Management LLC as president of the commercial real estate debt platform at Ready Capital, um, and that's NYSECRC. Since 2014, originating over $5 billion of commercial real estate loans in 2021. Prior to that, Mr. Gupta worked for GE Capital between 2003 and 2013, where he co-led the $5 billion public private investment fund, JV, with the U.S. debt of the Treasury and Engel Gordon and Company led GE Real Estate CMBS lending platform and also launched and grew GE's uh, so small to mid-balance real estate loan program, securitizing over $7 billion of that product. $7 billion of that product. Mr. Gupta also was also an officer at Fannie Mae, the founder of the 75 employee franchise real estate lender in the mortgage and asset backed security groups at NatWest Markets in Greenwich Capital. Mr. Gupta received a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Michigan in 1993 and a Master's of Science degree from Boston University in 1994. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to uh, give you Mr. Mr. An Anuj Gupta from Lending One. Uh, I'm gonna disappear. I will be coming back about probably a minute or two before he concludes his webinar. Um, and uh, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Anuj. Hey, thanks, Anthony. Um, hello, everyone. If you're watching this webinar, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to do so. Um, firstly, some background on myself. I'm a University of Michigan graduate, class of 93, go blow. And I also received my master's degree from Boston University in actuarial science. I never ended up practicing actuarial science, given a recruiter convinced me to join uh, the big bad world of investment banking. Um, though I'm grateful for having a very diverse and interesting career over the last 27 years, as I'm about to describe. In 1994, I started investment banking at NatWest Markets and Greenwich Capital, where I got introduced to securitizations. I was doing everything from home equity loans, equipment leases, subprime auto loans, um, anything, um, the, anything on the financing side that led itself to securitization. Um, in 1997, I joined a startup as the sixth employee doing franchise real estate loans. We grew that company to over 75 employees, uh, did 1.4 billion in loan volume over four years, eventually closing down that business and selling the portfolio. But this was a very relevant moment in my career where I had, a, I had significant management responsibility at the age of 27, but also clear realization that I needed more fundamental business training and experience. So what better than the very definition of corporate superiority and excellence than the General Electric Company? In 2001, I joined GE Capital to lead capital markets for their franchise and real estate businesses spread across the country. That was a truly amazing experience where I saw the best of market times, 2001 through 2006, and the worst of times when the great financial crisis hit in 07, 08. 
Over my career at GE, I created over 10 billion of off-balance sheet securitization programs for several GE businesses. I also led the CMBS business in New York. And after the financial crisis was co-head of a CMBS RMBS JV with Angelo Gordon and the US Department of Treasury, where we raised 5 billion in capital to help create liquidity and a pricing floor for CMBS and RMBS bonds and help begin the process of capital market stabilization. In 2013, I joined Waterfall Asset Management to help build out their capital markets infrastructure and set up numerous securitization shells. Uh, set up, I set up numerous securitization shells up for them, but ended up focusing more so on a fledgling owner-occupied lending business they had in Irvine, California. I led the effort to convert that business, Ready Capital, into a CRE lending business and eventually a public REIT and took it from less than 300 million a year in CRE loan volume to in 14 to over 5 billion last year across numerous products, including fixed rate loans, bridge loans, uh, and the and Freddie Mac small balance multifamily program. I also led the acquisition of a billion a year tax exempt bond financing business focused on affordable housing. I left Ready Capital as I felt the restructure it was part of was limiting and I had a strong desire to integrate technology in a more meaningful way into a lending platform. So fast forward, here I am at Lending One CRE, very excited to be here. I made the choice to join Lending One CRE, given its backing of a major global asset manager with significant access to capital. I felt this structure would allow me to create flexible common sense real estate products that real estate owners would appreciate. Too often, real estate sponsors have to limit their financing needs to a lender's products. It's my, it's my desire to change that and have the freedom to structure and price products that match the sponsor plan for the real estate. Only then can you optimize, um, you can optimize the real estate um, and have it achieve its eventual goals. We have the ability to deliver fixed rate and bridge loans. We call our fixed rate program structured fixed rate, given our ability to be flexible and introduce creative structure into the loans. A good example is to offer a fixed rate loan on a light transitional opportunity where we can offer a higher interest only rate to start, give the sponsor time to stabilize the asset, and then reward them with, with an earnout and a rate burn down if they meet their goals, but all in the context of a hardwired fixed rate loan. Furthermore, wouldn't, we, wouldn't it be great for a sponsor to have the ability to extend their fixed rate loan at maturity rather than face a balloon? If the property performance is as agreed upon and expected, and the property is meaningfully delevered, and the borrower wants to extend their loan for subsequent five-year periods at his or her option, and upon approval from the lender, why not have that hardwired in the loan documents so the infrastructure is there to do it? It's a free option for both the sponsor and the lender. We have started this journey of attempting to crack this code, and I hope in the end, all parties are to the loan, from the mortgage broker community to real estate sponsors see this as a win. Now, onto the real estate market and our perspective. On the macro side, coming into 2022, CRE transaction volumes had recovered to pre-COVID levels and cap rates have trended down. Industry and fun, in, industrial and multifamily properties were clearly the biggest drivers of appreciation, but office and retail have started turning positive as well. CRE, NI, CRE NOI growth is expected to be greater in 2022 than in 2021, with apartments and healthcare showing the most positive deltas. Moving to the individual property types. On the multifamily side, clearly we saw pandemic migration cause many residents to flee expensive, densely populated coastal urban city centers for less expensive, less dense suburban locations. This drove rent growth in less expensive Sun Belt and tech hub markets as high as 20%. Urban multifamily occupancy has recovered though, and rent growth is expected to be robust with these urban cores being populated by renters 10 years younger on average than those who left. The largest drops in vacancy are expected in the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic, such as Washington DC and Boston. Multifamily originations grew 25% in 2021 to 450 billion. Expectations are for further growth in 2022. On the industrial side, warehouse tenant demand is strong. Absorption levels remain high. Strong core growth for 21-22 
reflect strong rent growth and growing portfolio mark the market. The robust demand on the industrial side is translating into growing development pipelines. Office, the office rebound has started earlier than expected. Vacancy rates will grind down slowly with a long tail on headwinds from work from home. Back to work indices show physical utilization of office space at one fifth of pre COVID levels. Corporate balance sheets will face some stress in a persistent high rate environment, which could affect the pace of leasing. CapEx levels are expected to remain high and pressure economics. ESG is emerging as a big consideration for tenants in selecting space, possibly seen as further market pressure. On the retail side, Armed with built up savings and higher wage growth, consumer spending on services is hitting new peaks as consumers head out to stores and restaurants. Regional malls and outlets could see occupancy grind higher into 2022 with some rent roll down offsets. Strip center occupancy gains and rent spreads are positives for 2022. Returns for most retail subsectors is rebounding to just turning positive. On the self storage side, the slow pace of move outs and accelerating demand has caused occupancies and pricing power to become little more unpredictable. Assume some 2022 moderation as occupancies could trend lower. Moving on to real estate markets, um, PricewaterhouseCoopers and the Urban Land Institute put out a very insightful publication on real estate markets called Emerging Trends in Real Estate, which I reference. The pandemic upset bedrock property market principles in that the long-standing investor confidence and dominant dominant gateway 24 cities was somewhat shaken. Sunbelt metropolitan areas and 18R cities such as Charlotte and Denver gained, have gained popularity and are projecting strong population growth in coming years. A significant majority of the top rated markets for overall real estate prospects in the PWC ULI publication were located in faster growing Southern and Western regions away from the coasts. Uh, examples, Nashville, Raleigh-Durham, Phoenix, Austin, Charlotte, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth, Atlanta. Seattle and Boston, interestingly enough, were the only coastal cities named, named in the top markets for real estate prospects in 2022. Lastly, a word about interest rates, inflation, and credit spreads, which I'm sure is on a lot of people's minds today. The Federal Reserve is expected to maintain its hawkish stance with interest rates and with a primary focus on reining in inflation. Credit spreads on CMBS and CRE CLOs are at their wides currently, reflecting bearish investor sentiment and concern about future, the future rate environment. The double whammy of higher rates and higher credit spreads is leading to greater focus on coverage ratios today, which is constraining leverage down into the 60s. Sponsors will need higher capitalization levels as this persists, but could be rewarded on the other side if rent growth assumptions materialize and refinance rates moderate. Prepayment flexibility, prepayment flexibility will be an important factor going forward. Cap rates are at their lows, so sponsors and lenders need to an extent have to rely on rent growth for value creation. Our main focus with regards to this is how much reliance should a lender have on rent mark to market and growth and how much of that growth should be debt risk versus equity. Lenders and sponsors will need to find a balance. I do believe at Lending One CRE, we have the right structure and capital to be a flexible lender as I've mentioned earlier. We have the ability to offer fixed rate bridge loans with declining prepayment penalties, which will allow sponsors flexibility to capitalize on the success of their property strategies later down the line. We're also not dependent on the securitization market for liquidity, which will allow us to offer stable and patient capital. We thought long and hard as we launched our business about what our core business approach would be and what emerged was really two things, flexibility and communication. I've discussed flexibility at length here. On the other side, it is our goal as a company to focus on communication. We intend to give our mortgage broker partners and real estate sponsor partners constant communication. Our goal is to make sure that we have no period over two to three days where we have not communicated to our partners as to where we stand on their loan request. Our motto is to deliver the news, whether it's good or bad. 
We hope the real estate community will come to think of Lending One CRE as a transparent, easy to deal with organization that is very relevant in the CRE lending space. Again, I wanted to thank all the brokers and sponsors showing us deals. Um, and if you reach this far in the webinar, I'm again incredibly appreciative of your time and hope all of this has piqued your interest. Lastly, I wanted to thank Anthony Cazasis and team at the New York Real Estate Expo for giving us this opportunity to record this webinar and also working with our broader, broader team on, on numerous webinars that have uh, really helped our, our business move forward. Uh, thanks again, and appreciate it. Anuja, yeah, th thank you, Anuj. Uh, we appreciate this. We always do. We always appreciate when Lending One comes on and sponsors a webinar. I know you guys are going to be coming back next month. There's a, there is a web talk, I believe, that Michael or yourself or Matt is going to be a part of, as well as a CEO presentation that will be aired in December. And this CEO presentation is very interesting. It's going to be basically all the CEOs of all the firms. They're going to be talking about what's, uh, what's been going on, uh, what has happened in 2022, and what their vision is for 2023. So think of a good vision for 2023 where you guys are going to be uh, with this new product, of course. <laughs> so that's going to be, everybody's going to want to know that. And again, this, this CEO presentation is going to be heard. Uh, guys like Cushman and CBRE, Wake, uh, you know, all those companies, uh, National, uh, NI Globo, uh, and, and, and so many more, JLL, and, and of course, all the banks, Citibank Chase, Investors First, Your Bank, Lending One, and so on and so on. So once again, guys, I want to thank everybody that's been uh, streaming as well as coming on live. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with a, a full house of uh, many different banks that are going to be presenting. Uh, but once again, Thank you, Anuj. Thank you, Lending One. This concludes our webinar, and we look forward to uh, seeing uh, many of you tomorrow. You take care and have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Anuj. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.